Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. We're going to be looking at inverse trig functions. This is one of the more advanced parts of trigonometry. Um, when we first looked at trigonometry, we introduced to you the rule of Sokotoa. Okay, that was used for right angled triangles, finding sides and angles. So can you remember the Sokotoa rule? <laughs> You'd be better be able to remember it, otherwise you need to go back and look at that review lesson. But sine theta was equaling to opposite over hypotenuse. We looked at cos theta, which equaled adjacent over hypotenuse. And we looked at toa, which is our tan theta, equals opposite over adjacent. And that was all relative to that right angled triangle with theta as the angle labeled or drawn in and opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. So what are we talking about when we talk about inverse trig functions? Well, think about inverse. We've said before, you know, if I have the number of, let's say, a half, what would be the inverse of a half? Well, it would be 2 over 1. It's the opposite. Okay, if I had, you know, the number 3, what would be the inverse of 3? Well, you might say, well, it's 3 over 1, so it's going to be 1 over 3. So the inverse is basically the opposite or the number upside down or flipped. Um, reciprocal is another word for inverse. So when I'm talking about inverse trig functions, instead of having sine theta, what I'm talking about is having 1 over sine theta. When I'm talking about the inverse of cos theta, we're talking about 1 over cos theta. And obviously, if when I'm talking about the inverse of tan theta, we're talking about the 1 over tan theta. Now, just like you have um, sine, cos, and tan, the actual inverse trig functions have a different name. Instead of having, you know, writing it as just saying the inverse of sine or writing 1 over sine theta, we have a new little name for it. For the 1 over sine theta, well, actually, what I might say, I might tell you what the three are first of all. The first one is called the cosec theta, then we have our sec theta, and then we have our cot theta. So one of those means 1 over sine theta, one of them means 1 over cos theta, and one means 1 over tan theta. Which do you think means which? Well, you might recognize that cot theta is probably going to be tan theta because there's a t in it. But then you've got cosec and sec. Okay, a lot of people think that cosec is cos because it's got cos in it. Um, that's actually incorrect. So what I'm going to tell you, the little rule to, to think about is the third letter of each. The third letter should tell you whether it's sine, cos, or tan. So the third letter here is S. So actually, that's our, sine, or our, our inverse of sine. So we can say that cosec theta is equal to 1 over sine theta. Because the sec has a C in the third letter, we say that sec theta is the inverse of cos theta. And obviously with a T means cot theta is the inverse of tan theta. So we've got these new cosec, these sec and this cot. And I know you're probably thinking, hold on, you know, when I looked at trick to start off with, we had seen sine, cos, and tan on our calculator. The problem is that I've never seen cosec, sec, or cot on the calculator, and that's true. They are not there. However, if you can find the value of what sine theta is, and you certainly can do that via the calculator or via your trigonometry rules, then we simply know that the cosec theta is 1 over that value. Likewise, if you can find what cos theta is, then we know that sec theta will simply be 1 over that value. And likewise, whatever tan theta is, the inverse is simply 1 over that value too. So let's have a quick look at some of the, the questions that you can sort of come across. So we're going to look at a right angle triangle. We might put 60 degrees here. Um, We'll put uh, that as 3, that as 4, and let's say that's going to be 5. I'm going to put all those values in there. Um, we won't be finding theta or a length or anything like that at all. I'm just going to be practicing 
finding a uh, the actual ratio. So for example, you know, before I might have said find the value of what sine theta is. So sine theta is equal to, let's say, our opposite over a hypotenuse, so 3 over 5. So that's all I'll be writing is 3 over 5 or 0 0.6, because they all asked me to find was the value of sine theta. So if they asked me to find the value of cosec theta, well cosec, the inverse of cosec, okay, is, or should I say cosec is the inverse of sine, 1 over sine theta. So what's the inverse or the reciprocal of 3 over 5? Well, you might say it's going to be 5 over 3, and that's simply your answer. Okay, um, if I ask to find the value of um, sec theta, then you might say, well, cos theta is going to be 4 over 5. So you might say cos theta is equal to 4 over 5. So then, then sec theta is the inverse of that. Okay, what is the inverse of the reciprocal of 4 over 5? Well, it's going to be 5 over 4. And if I look at cot theta, okay, cot theta, then the inverse of cot theta, well, let's see what tan theta is first of all. Tan theta is 3 over 4. So obviously, cot theta is the inverse of tan theta. So what's the inverse or the reciprocal of 3 over 4? It's going to be 4 over 3. Okay, so it's actually pretty easy, guys. It is actually pretty easy. And that's all you would be asked to find at this stage. You know, find the, the, um, find the, the representation of sec theta, cot theta, sec theta, cosec theta, sorry. Um, there's not much else that will be asked. I guess the, the harder questions will come from the next one, which I will show you a little bit. There is a, another um, uh, video on this, but I certainly will show it to you. And that's looking at exact values. So I will show this to you. So, you know, think about, you know, you might get a question saying, um, find the exact value of so find the exact value of, let's say, we'll do cos 30 degrees, we'll do um, sine 60 degrees, we'll do tan 45 degrees, and then we might do sec 30 degrees, we might do cot 60 degrees and F will do cosec 45 degrees. Okay, so that looks like a pretty tough question. And I know it's um, certainly some different stuff. For most of you, you've done the first three. Okay, we did that in uh, term two for some of you in year nine or um, we did that in term one for some of you in, uh, in uh, year 10. But certainly that comes from your two right angle triangles, okay, which is our um, 60 degree, 30 degree triangle, which was 1, 2, and root 3. Or you had the right angled isosceles, although that doesn't look like an isosceles triangle, my apologies. It'd be the 45, 45 right angle triangle, which is 1, 1, and root 2. Now, if you can't remember how to draw those triangles, then I really do suggest you go back to watch the, the video on exact values, and then you can obviously continue with this one. Okay, so how do I find cos 30? Well, 30 degrees is here, so cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, so I'd simply say it's going to be root 3 over 2. How would I find sine 60, or the exact value of sine 60? Will it be root 3, because it's opposite, over 2? It's the same value, isn't it? Often we will say these are complementary um, angles because they have the same value. Okay, same value. And look, 30 plus 60 is 90. 
funny enough that that's an that's for another day um 10 45 is opposite over adjacent so we can use either of these two angles i'll use this one here opposite over adjacent so it's one over one or just one so how would i then find sec 30 okay well sec 30 we know that sec is the inverse of cos we know cos 30 is root 3 over 2. So what's the reciprocal or the inverse of root 3 over 2? Well, you might say it's going to be 2 over root 3. So it's just the exact value of cos 30 upside down. Likewise, if I'm doing cot 60, well, what's tan 60? Tan 60, 60 here, would be root 3 over 1. So it'd be 1 over root 3. The last one there, cosec 45, will S for the third letter is sine. So sine 45 will be 1 over root 2. So the reciprocal of 1 over root 2 would be root 2 over 1. So you can sort of see, guys, that although, look, this is new, um, it is more challenging. It's actually not that hard. If you can just remember that sec links with cos, cot links with tan and cosec links with sine then it's simply just the reciprocal of whatever value cos sine or tan is it's just chuck it upside down all right look i hope that made a bit of sense to you um, we certainly will be doing some more work on this in the in the uh, next coming lessons but hopefully that gives you a good introduction of what cosec sec and cot are and how to apply them to a normal question or an exact value question. Best of luck with this stuff. Um, any problems, let me know, and we'll do a bit more work on it. Cheers, guys.